Welcome to another episode of the Grappling With Life podcast. I am joined today by Brother Ramiz Ibrahim. Welcome. My pleasure, bro. Thank you for coming back. Alhamdulillah. I just want to say I really like your shirt. I was told I look old in it today. It uh, sounded like it <laughs> cut deep, man. <laughs> Did it cut deep? I love it. It was actually £45. I got it for £12 on a sale in Tesco's. It's nothing like a good, good bargain. Good, good bargain. <laughs> 45, I'll turn it around for 12 quid. I'm having that. It looks good, man. I, there's okay. a thing, I've got a thing about, you know, shirts like that, man. You know, I bought a couple in it. It's like, yeah. got my it's little shirt. Isn't it? Yeah, it's shirt, like, yeah. Uh, it's not a jacket and it's not a, a shirt. I put it over my uh, 80s top. See that, you know, you know what you're wearing right there? That's some Tony Soprano. That's there. what I was going to say. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. It's like 80s. a Tony Soprano. I I've got Pharaohs on. <clears throat> Farrow trousers. They were, they were a big thing in the 80s. Have you got rock ports on? Wexmans. Well, they look like rock ports, yeah. but they're not. They look like rock ports, but they're not. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so... Um, 80s today. For the, for those uh, older listeners, you know, you should know what rock ports are, man. Golden oldie. That's it, man. I used to... Do you remember catalogues? Little Woods and all that stuff. I used to go through them. You know what I used to do? I used to get carbon paper. You remember carbon paper? I'd put it underneath and then I'd put uh, a piece of paper and then I'll, I'll trace all the trainers out. Right. So it looks like I've, and then I'll colour it in and oh, in my nice. own colours and all that nice. stuff. It's before PlayStation, bro. You could have been the, the designer. I could have been. I mean, I've got I've, I've got this like thing about me about design and colours and stuff like that. But um, well, don't kill don't kill your dream. Inshallah. No. I, I actually, you know, it's funny. I do it in my day to day life. You know, all the branding for all the businesses and stuff that we do. Yeah, like a lot of it has, has come from you know collaborating with other mm. people and you know, using my creativity. So Ramiz, today you're here for a specific reason. You're always really? here for a specific reason. But I wanted to kind of, from the last time we spoke, <clears throat> I wanted to kind of, um, we're talking about doing a series of podcasts. Sure. All right. So we kind of went back and forth about what kind of topics. So last time it was physical, about the body. Well, it was more about it's you. More, it's more about, it's more eclectic. Eclectic, it? We, that's yeah. it. But we kind of like touched upon hijama, yeah. like you know, body and, and we did, we did, there was loads actually yeah, to yeah. when you look I'm back at it. It was good. So I think today, um, I want to touch a little bit on the psychotherapy side of things. Mental health. So. Yeah. yeah. And the reason why is because I think, um, obviously like the demographic that listened to this show, uh, obviously it's nine, uh, last time I checked it was about 99% male. Wow. Or identify as male. So <laughs> let's just leave it at that. that is, what I mean is like people could just, go there. yeah, let's not go there. But I mean like, yeah, mm. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. Um, as far as I know mm. from the analytics, yeah. So with that, this specific demo, we've got two kind of made main age ranges. Yeah. So we've got the 18 to 25 or 21, sorry. And then 21 to 35. And then those are the big main Okay. Uh, demographics. So, so we should really gear it towards more um, self development, um, helping mental health. Yeah. How to grow, you know, instill instill in the young boys how to be the person they want to be. Really. Yeah. So I thought let's crack on with something quite light hearted a little bit. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> Bit worried about that, but go on. Um, because we've got easy in, man. This is the Grappling with Life podcast. We can't just be, I don't want it to be like um, too serious, but I want it to be a way which is relatable to everyone sure. who's listening yeah. in it. So yeah. first thing is, what's the weird, like obviously without giving any names, which you've been doing this for quite a while, about 19 mm. years, right? Um, so what would you say? On was, and off 19, well, yeah, 19 years, but officially sort of like from 2009, yeah. Okay, cool. that was just unofficial. Right, fine, fine, fine. So you got you got registered and all that stuff. Mm. And so what was the kind of strangest um, request when someone's coming to a clinic? Like, a, do you know what I mean? The cl when you say clinic, we're talking about my... We're, talk, we're talking about my clinic, or we're no. talking about just for mental health, mental reasons. health and stuff. When strange I say strange, strange is, there is not really not, strange. not strange, not strange. Something that took you back a little bit, or made you kind of really think hard. Oh, when I first heard it, yeah. So it was like, oh, like, Husbands. especially when you first started. Nothing really shocks me. Okay, you know, it never has done. I've never been shocked per se, like mm. oh, but it's made me. 
think to always expect the unexpected. Mm-hmm. Now, I've counselled individuals, males. Um, sisters are counsel if they've got a maharam, but it doesn't really work out that way because they can't really speak what they want to speak, so I refer them. Couples, no problem. But I've had, you know, individuals who... Now, let, I mean, let's, let's put it this way. You know, the reality is, uh, and I've been saying this for a long time, whatever affects the non-Muslims will affect us too. Mm. And it has done. Um, I've spoken to many, many Muslims who have um, homosexual tendencies. I've spoken to couples whose husbands visit, I'll say women of ill repute, if you like. Ladies of the night. Ladies of the night. And the wife knows about it and says, I'll prefer to do that rather than get married again. Wow. You know, brothers who sell drugs, uh, pimping as well. I don't judge. You know, I'm not going to... We're not in this situation whereby, oh, we're not, we're, you're not allowed to judge. You know, we're not here to judge. Yeah, Allah says that we're here to judge. But judging doesn't mean what they're saying is, you know, there's a deen on nasiha, isn't it? A deen is good, sincere advice. So when you try and give advice these days, oh, don't judge me. Judge means, judge means saying to you, that's wrong, you're going to go to the hellfire. You don't end up saying that. You just say, brother, this is, you know, this is wrong. He says, yeah, no problem. That's that's you and that's you, but don't expose it. Don't expose your sin. Because very difficult if you, to you know to be in a position to like the hadith the Prophet the said that Allah for some it finds difficult to forgive because at night time Allah was a hijab around your sin and during the day you're exposing it. You know, so I've, I've I wouldn't say I've seen it all, but I've seen ninety nine percent of whatever's out there. So how do you reconcile, like, because we live in a, let's be honest, uh, an atheist society, yeah? Mm. So the concept of sin, even though you're Muslim, there's not really a consequence to it. Does that make sense? For the atheist, you mean? No, for the Muslim. What do you mean there's no consequence? There's no laws around it. Do you understand? So for example... Enforcing what you need to do. Yeah, so for example, adultery, for example, yeah? Yeah. If you commit adultery, yeah, here it's it's not even doesn't it's not even looked upon as a sin or it's it's obviously bad, yeah. But um, whereas if you lived in a in a Muslim country, actually most Muslim countries have eased up on everything. Eased up on everything, yeah, but yeah. so so you can imagine you're Muslim living in a non-Muslim country. You have these personal government personal laws that you govern yourself with, really. Islam is meant to be a not just a personal thing, but it's a institutional thing, right? The, inst- the institution has been removed. So we've got all these Muslims living in the West that are being governed by themselves, basically, self, self-governed. self So when, when someone, like, for example, that pimp that came to you, and obviously he's come to you for, I'm, I'm guessing you didn't go look for him. <laughs> he's obviously no, referred himself. To, he didn't come to me because, I mean, he knew he was doing his wrong. He, he didn't come to you for the pimping? Not specifically per sorry. se, but he... <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> so, so, sorry. He, I mean, he came from because he had issues. And then we spoke about that. And then the pimping came out afterwards. Well, he spoke to me about, you know, I'm doing this and doing that, brother. Because yeah. he feel, that's the guilt speaking. Yeah. I said, listen, you know it's wrong. But can I just address why I'm laughing? Yeah. I just imagine you in, <laughs> in my head. <laughs> just imagine the guy came and listen. Pimping it easy. And I'm, I'm, it didn't come out like that. Basically, he didn't say, I've, I'm here because I'm a pimp. No, no. They, never, they, they come for their own reasons, their own personal right. reasons. Okay. okay. And <laughs> Zach, stop laughing, bro. So, yeah. And he's, serious. I mean, <laughs> so he's come, for, he's, he's come for whatever well, specific reason. Yeah, whether reason. it's drugs yeah, right, or whether right. it's pimping, it's all the same thing. Yeah. And it's, just, it's, it's all sins. Yeah. You know, we're not going to look at the degrees of punishment for it. Yeah, yeah. Which, it's all sins. Yeah. So when a person talks about it in a regretful way, yeah then all you can say is, I mean, in a, in a counselling environment, you, you can't really advise and you can't really judge and you can't really say anything about this. That's the, how do you feel about it? Oh, I know it's wrong and I want to stop it. Well, then you know what you have to do. You know, if, if he came to me and said, no, it's okay to do, after the session, I would advise him as, a, as an elder, I would advise him, especially mm. if he's a Muslim. Yeah. 
yeah, especially if he's a Muslim. But you know, everybody is everybody's in a situation in a pickle these days. Yeah, you know, and they're all different. Way, you know, it all comes from how you have a moral compass growing up, and you may even have the moral compass growing up, but you've been misguided somewhere, somewhere, somewhere along the line. Majority of issues, I believe, are from not being given the right attachment to your parents, giving the right nurturing, the right love, the right validation, the fulfillment, and that sort of thing. So you start seeking it. Mm. And you're seeking it in different ways. So if you're if you're going to start, it's like, for example, having a very negative friend. And you say to him, oh, I'm going to start this business. Oh, but this may happen, that may happen. Yeah, Shaitan will whisper the same thing to you. You know, go and protect her. And then in that was to protect her. And then he'll say something. Then she'll say, why don't you just get her to work? I don't know how it works. I don't, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know. Yeah. What I'm saying is, I don't... It doesn't start off I don't like blame that. anybody. Yeah. You know, everyone's got... The, just because his sin is that, doesn't make your sin any less, mm. you know, palatable, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, you know, we get a lot of... Nowadays, now, for example, since the lockdown, it's been more and more, more couples uh, counselling. And they are arguing over some really, really silly things. Now, to me, it's silly, and to you, maybe silly, but to them, it's, it's real. The, the struggle is real, as they say, you know. And I believe that these silly things that are argued over are due to mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual frustrations. Um, and I think I mentioned this to you in the last podcast, and I always mention it nowadays, especially now. You know. 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, you get married and you have children and you carry on, get with the program, as they say. Yeah, and it's fine. And even if they're going to kill each other, they don't divorce. Nowadays, couples, they get married and, and, and just because, you know, maybe his feet smell or she picks her nose. It's a, it's, 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 it's a, it's a form of contention. Hmm. Oh, why do you want divorce? His feet smells. Or she picks her nose. Well, these are characteristics that you can resolve. And my advice to young couples when they get married now, for the first two years, don't have any children at all. You just enjoy each other's company, physically at most, emotionally. So emotional and physical intimacy go hand in hand. Fulfill yourselves. And when you have children, the husband won't get jealous. But nobody can tell me that when you're with, when you first get married, you have no children, then you have children. The child gets all the attention. I reckon ninety nine percent of men will get a little bit jealous, a little bit thingy about it. Say, well, I want. There's no time for me. And the shaitan will come and try and put a big, huge barrier between you. Mm-hmm. There's lots of different things of the way. And if you're not strong minded or strong, you know, you have emotional intelligence, emotionally strong, you'll, you'll succumb to it. Especially it's like just implanted in you, you know? That's not giving you attention. You want to go and get married again. You should, you know, ignore her. Go and do what you got to do. And then if he hasn't been, if he needs validation, make a seek it somewhere else. You know, it happens to the best of men. Mm-hmm. You know, but you have to learn from these things and grow. Now you're saying that the, the, the majority of our listeners are, you're saying 18, 25, and so it's 18 to 35. Yeah. And that's where, you know, becoming a man should be less than that. You know, in the Jewish community, 13 of a bar mitzvah says become a man now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In our community, to be beloved and, you know, to reach puberty is when you've got a little, little tash or hair here or hair down below, and that's it. But what kind of man is that man or that boy? So the, now we're living amongst. Men who are man children, as they say, because they haven't, they're not very stoical, if you like. They haven't got the stoicism in them to control their emotions, understand where they're coming from. And that's because the father and the mother are still children, no matter what. They haven't, they haven't, they're not strong emotionally. So when they have children, you know, a child, if, if, say a five year old child, so have a little tantrum, the mother and father take it personal. I'll give you something to cry about, smack. Shut up, you know, go and sit in the corner, go and, this is this is this is this is meeting the child as a child. How do you deal with that? The same way you deal with 
an adult child, if you know, if you if you if you like, who's having a tantrum, who doesn't get what they want, so they have a little tantrum. So the child needs to understand that there is a way of controlling his emotions and letting out anger, you know, em uh, emotional anger, healthily, being taught that, validated for it. Listen, son, there's a way, of, scream and shout is not really going to get you anywhere. What you're feeling there is disappointment because you didn't get what you get, what you got. When you calm down, we'll discuss it. So I was going to ask you as well, like, um, so you're Allah saying Allah. that, you're saying that, um, uh, you got children bringing up children, basically, man children or adult children bringing yeah. up children. And I mean, as you were as you were talking, I was thinking about like why why is that? Why is it that you know? Look, at, I think the consequences are less now than before. So if you think about pre pre, you look at maybe just say a hundred years ago, you don't mm -hmm. you're not afforded the luxuries that we have now, right? So you have to grow up really quickly. You got to get a job. Makes There's no you weak. That's it. So that whole that whole um, uh, saying it says uh, strong men make good times. Good times make weak, weak men, men. Weak men make hard times. Hard, hard times. times make strong men. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's kind of the situation we're in. You know, like our parents or grandparents. Some of them fought in, like, even if you, if you took it from, like, in the UK, there was, I think that there's there's still World War II people that are still, uh, soldiers are still alive today, man. And they, yeah, they, and think yeah. about, think about what they've, what their, what their life was like, you know. Mm. You know, well, hundred years ago, even, you'd be horse riding, archery, yeah. swimming, hunting, you may, you'd be a man yeah. very, very quickly. Yeah. Even now. Um, in some parts of the world, you can you can still become man very very quickly. Yeah, as a teenager, yeah. you know, in some parts of Africa, if not all parts of the where the villages and tribes, you're given a spear, taken a certain place, and you have to make your way back. If you make it back, if you make it back, then you're then you're allowed to marry as a man. Mm. So we, we don't, don't have, have that in our Muslim culture. This is it. So we don't we have to manufacture it a little bit. You yeah. know, like sometimes that's why sports and. You know, we have to put ourselves out there. And the thing is, I give you, can I can I give you a little anecdote? So last two weeks ago, a woman came in with her son, two sons, yeah, uh, at Legion, yeah. So uh, the class was going on and she, she asked me, look, well, I want my son to, to train. They live literally two minutes away on, on by mm -hmm. walking. So she goes, yeah, I want my son to start wrestling, this, that, the other. So... The little one wanted to do it. He was five. He was too young. But the one who was like 10, he just didn't want to do it. So I was speaking to him. I was like, yo, why don't you want to do it, man? Because it's boring. Yeah. So I looked at him. I was like, what's so boring? How do you know it's boring? Yeah, we haven't done it. Nice, nah, boring. I go, what do you like to do? Because I like to stay at home, play computer play games. Play games. <laughs> so in my head, in my head, I was like, I could never say that in front of my dad. That's number one. If, so, if an adult was to speak to me like, like in that way, like I would speak to him like a, you know, the response he gave me. He's giving you front. Yeah. Like that's, that's number one. That's step one was, okay. There's the, a, there's the way a, he said it. There's yeah. a situation going on here Ooh. within the di the family dynamic. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. That's number one. Number two, um, <clears throat> they've given them too much. There's no like. Enough. There's not enough friction going on in his life. Everything is easy, yeah. And the thing is, fair, fair play. He came and he enjoyed the class, yeah. And he, I think he took part. He took part. Oh, great. Uh, he okay. came back. His his, dad, his his father actually this time brought him back, hmm. and you know he took part. And mashallah, he he he, like obviously there, there's lots of points of improvement, but he took part. And and I feel like if he keeps coming back, a lot of change is going to happen. Inshallah. But again. Like, I would never let my child speak to an adult like that. Impossible. The Muslims? Yeah. But it's not that he was rude. It's just that I would have that conversation with him afterwards. And, and, and I don't blame the parents or anything. It was just mm. like, right, we have to we have to start working on your communication skills. You know, like, <laughs> this is not how well, you should speak well, like, in him. But he's know, a kid anyway. He's 10 years old, but... You know, there's a, there's a, there's a, <clears throat> a cycle of growth, right? So... You become the way your father speaks. You become the way your mother speaks. 
or acts or walks or talks or behaves or whatever it may be. No matter how, however you like to put it, that's how, that is the that is unfortunately the way things are. Mm. I hear a lot of brothers and sisters. I don't want to become like my mum or my dad. Unfortunately, you will become that way. But some parts of the parenthood you can take as an advantage. But like my first generation, mum and dad. They're not going to sit there mentor, mentoring me the way I mentor my children. Emotional intelligence, you know, how to be, you know, uh, you know, these kind of, um, what what they would say is, what is, what is this emotional intelligence, whatever, just get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. But because we're living in this kind of society, all these pent up things will, will arise and will come out of the, the individual. In my parents' generation, there was no like, oh, I didn't get validated when I was young. They're just taught to, they came here first generation, worked their butt off to bring us up. That's it. That's all they're interested in. They didn't care about our feelings. They, that, our feelings didn't matter at all. But unfortunately, it mattered to us because we're living in this kind of society. And this society breeds, I won't say softness, but it breeds a way of making you realize that you do matter. And so you start thinking about it. My feelings should be important, especially when they're in a, in a marriage situation. People pleasing, you know, seeking validation, sensitivity, attachment, codependency. They can be, it could be a bad trait and a good trait, but it depends on how um, you are ready, how ready you are to grow and understand your own feelings. As a man, yeah. I'm not going to look at the the female side of things now, but as a man, um, specifically, you need to know how to deal with your emotions. And it's not about holding them in and just, oh, smack, oh, smack, like we was brought up. I can't bring my children up the way I was brought up. You know, I haven't, I've smacked my girls' bums three times between them up to the age of eight and they're 15 and 13 now. There's no need for that because we communicate. A huge communication. I make sure that they're validated and I make sure that they have the emotional response to any given situation, the right emotional response with control. So, you know, I've, I've said to my girls, um, you know, I want them to be a way of when you get married. It's not about I I have my feelings too, and you start reacting. You have to be respectfully assertive and not rude to your husband or to anybody else, work colleague or anybody. So listen, I wasn't put here for to, to to abuse me. I love you as my husband. I love you as my friend, but be careful how you speak to me. That's it. You put people in their place, a lesson learned, because that if that person has any love for that person, my daughter, me, or you, if you, something, if you see something in me you don't like, you don't tell me, and I'll find out. I don't want to hang around with you. There's no point saying to someone, you know, I love you for, for the sake of Allah, but you don't tell me where, I'm, where, where I stand. You don't tell me when I'm getting wrong. Mm. There's no point to that. So being rude is different than, ha than having our being respectfully assertive you've got to stand your ground and tell the person this is not happening and then going further than that teach them physical skills as they say it's the 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 best defense against evil yeah is to is for good men or people to be skilled at violence and i read that in a quote i've had i've had that on my phone for a long time it's like having the beast under control by letting it loose a little bit, if you have to, to the person that you're talking to, because they will try and cross boundaries. So teaching the children what is a boundary, and then if someone crosses that boundary, oh wait, 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 you're crossing that boundary, easy. If they want to control, if they want to keep crossing it, then you have to ex uh, you know assert your uh, uh, assertiveness a bit stronger. Mm. And eventually, if they don't, then they're going to get a slap. That's the final thing. We're not pacifists. You know, Islam, they say Islam is peace. It's peace between yourself and your creator. 
But Allah has given you a way to live your life mentally, physically, spiritually, militarily, domestically, ever spiritually, emotionally, everything. So we shouldn't bring our children up as robots or second-class emotional beings that other people's feelings are more important than theirs. I make sure that my children's feelings are just as important as the person that they're with. Like, and it starts from a young age. It starts from a young age that if you've got two children, for example, and one's doing playing with something, doing something, and you come and say, "Oh, so and so wants that now. Give it to you know, give it to Maryam, give it to Ali, whatever it may be." And sharing is caring, for example. And you take that off that child and give it to that child. That child who wanted it just be, has been made to believe the whole world will now revolve 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 about with uh, around them. And the child who gave away the toy or whatever they're playing with is made to believe that the other people's emotions and pleasing them are more important than pleasing yourself. There has to be a balance. I'm making it look easy, but it's not. Because you have to be aware of it with yourself first before you give it to your children. So if I said that nobody should have children until they work out these things, there'll be no children for the next 20 years. Because yeah. it takes a long time to develop. You know, I've come to an age, and not just chronological age, but a spiritual age now. That I look back in my past and some I do regret so many things. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> and... I'm not going to let it define me because I'm not that person. I'm not. I'm the person now. And I've learned so much about myself in being in those situations that really, morally, I shouldn't be in, but I was put in there for a reason. And I've learned from it. And now I can help others with it. So, inshallah. So, to go back with, so we're looking at this, the, the symptoms and... So this whole thing about patient-centered approach. So yeah. Just give us a... Well, person-centered a approach or patient-centered approach or Rogerian-centered is from Carl Rogers. His person-centered... Oh, was he a country singer? Carl Rogers? No, no, that's a... <laughs> was he a guy? Oh, that's Kenny Rogers, isn't it? <laughs> was it? Why'd you do these things? <laughs> it just came into my head, bro. <laughs> If you're going to start me off, I'm about to stop. I'm, I'm, trying to keep, I'm trying to focus. My ADHD will kick in and my mind will go all over the place now. So now we need to laughing. know who this, the singer is. No, how no? It's that country no, singer. No, Carl Rogers. Kenny Rogers. The Ken, it was Kenny Rogers. Uh, the guy with the beard. He actually looks a bit like you, bro. Why do you know him, though? That's the question. I don't know why he came. Bro, <laughs> let me just Google Kenny Rogers. Go, Google Kenny Rogers. He's a, he's a, he's a country singer, bro. He's not just country singer. He's got some tunes, yeah. This guy. <laughs> yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah, he's no, got I don't some, look nothing he's, like you, bro. He's got some tunes. <laughs> yeah, he's a country singer, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. So, <laughs> Carl Rogers' theory, he's got a theory about how to approach people in a more humanistic way. So, his protocols of a person-centered therapy is unconditional positive regard. So, allowing the person to be themselves in this hour that you're with them. It's fine. There's no judgment. Just be yourself. Being congruent. Congruent means having the same shape and size by actually being on the same level as that person so that you can empathize. Okay. So a, a lot of people, patients, make a mistake in thinking that, that the therapist has the answers. We haven't got the answers. The solutions are with you, with the patient. We just have to paraphrase things to you. Yeah. We have to reflect back things to you so that you can maybe hear things that, you, you, that you're not listening to yourself to hear those things. Because... I think to conceptualize this, because these are quite complex uh, They are complex. Uh, theories, I don't want to get yeah. too, too yeah, deep into it. It's about being a very good friend at that particular so let's, point. Let's, let's play a scenario. Mm. I bite my fingernails, which I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So I've come to you What's the, what's the process? Let's do like a mini... Well, the first thing that you... If you say to me that you bite your fingernails, I'm, it's, I, I would like to say, ask you why and when do you do it? Mm. Is it under a, stress, a stressful situation? Is it under emotional stress? Or when you're discombobulated? Or when you can't make a decision? Which then could be anxiety. And that's the way you release your anxiety, is biting your fingernails. Or maybe that's how you think. I don't think about it, bro. I just do it. Hmm. 
Do you like the taste? Now you're getting nasty, man. <laughs> now you're getting nasty. I don't know. Maybe I do. I don't know. But I like. Maybe, I've actually never thought about it like that. Like, does it? What's the trigger? You mean? What triggers me to when bite my fingernails? Or is it just a habitual thing that when they get long, you, you want to cut them? You just you ain't got time to go and get a, I, I, a uh, which clipper. So I don't know. It's them. not even about the clippers because I can't do nothing with my left hand. It's like it's disabled, bro. Me trying to cut my right hand, <laughs> cut my right fingernails. <laughs> I'm the same. I can't do it, bro. So I just bite them. <laughs> but but so I it's think not an anxiety it, thing. It's not a. It's not something. To but do there are with times where I bite them more. So that it might be uh, attributed <coughs> to anxiety, but this whole session, for example, obviously this is a fictional session, yeah. But this whole session would dig deeper into kind of. Of course, I would say yeah, that, yeah. you know you, you saw somebody you may, maybe you saw somebody do it. Mm. It's a learned, it's an acquired response to a given yeah. situation, because children have to be taught how to deal with emotional stress as well yeah. from a young age, and the reactions that we give to people are usually from triggers mm. i remember um when i was in my 20s i suffered from really bad panic attacks because bro when i say bad like i thought i was gonna die like almost every night for a year so if i say to you if i if i was to ask you a yeah. question the emotional response to those given the emotional response, the panic, yeah, and the emotion, yeah, the potency of the emotion to the given situation, yeah, you think was exaggerated. What do you mean? The panic so my, that you the, had, the panic was, was it because exaggerated? Of what, what was it? Why? Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're saying was the, the response, fear level, yeah, was the was the was the trigger the same level deserved? As the fear? Yeah, did did mm. did the trigger deserve this much response or reaction? No, because we do have we do have what we call emotional dysregulation with ADHD right. um, patients, which is on the autism scale. Yeah, I found that I'm ADHD. But how do you? So the so, thing is, how did you find? I don't out, like labels. How did you find out you were ADHD? Bro? Because I ignored a lot of signs growing up. So like what kind of signs? Like that, but they're not. Give me give me an example, bro. I, obviously, I'm not. I just want to know, bro, because I feel I feel like sometimes. Okay, you, you the word struggle, yeah. for example, yeah. yeah. The word struggle is more poignant with ADHD. Struggle. The struggle. The internal struggle. The the hype the the hyperactivity isn't external. Mm. It's internal. Right. With my mind, I try and resolve ten things in one go. And I can. And some stressful situations I can handle better than anybody else. Most ADHD, I would rather have ADHD brothers around me than anybody else. Yeah. Because our minds work very, very quick. But sometimes we can get triggered by the smallest things and become hyperbolic in our response. We re react to those little things much more mm. than anybody else would do. But, but we would deal with other stressful situations better than those same people who response, respond less to those little things that happen. So do you find that, like, I know with me, yeah. Concentration span. Both. When I was younger, it was worse. But but you could also have imposter syndrome, self sabotage. You believe they don't deserve something, so, you, so that you'd end up doing nothing in life. So you mm. to be, you, you you said, well, I wanted to be a vet when I was younger, right? Yeah. And I had three friends. I still remember the name. If they can hear me, I'd like to get in touch with me. Prakash Patel, Muhammad Akram, which I know. And I know his brother as well now. And there was one more and I don't know. They're always sat together. Yeah. And they're all doctors now, from I heard from from what I hear. And they said, come when they I used to love science. So I said they say to me, come sit with us. But then I'll get distracted. Always distracted. I can't, I can't my concentration span given something is very, very low. But if it's something that I like. Nobody's much more concentrated. Hyper, hyper focus. Hyper, yeah, hyper focus. So I'm the same, bro. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. I feel like I'm sizzling. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand that. Like my brain is actually sizzling. Yeah. It's like at a frequency yeah, where um, either I go deep into something where days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm into, and then, and then, you know, you pop your head back up. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, whoa. where did time go? Or, or, um, my, 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 my worst 
nightmare is being in a, in a scenario where I have to listen to something that I have no interest in. Yeah. That's it's really like insane. I'm dying. Sometimes I talk to some, some people and my attention to listening, uh, I said, what, what am I going to do now? Yeah, it's torture, isn't it? It's torture. Yeah. But when I'm going to do counseling with people, I take loads of magnesium. Yeah. Magnesium helps. Is it? Yeah. Before I, before I found magnesium, when I just come from work and my mind is spinning, like the internal struggle, the internal hyperactivity. If you talk to me, I say, I can't talk to you. I'm looking at you, but I'm not seeing you. I've got, there's so much going yeah. on. I had to close my eyes and just sit there and just let it pass. Just let it pass. But alhamdulillah for magnesium. Oh. It calms the mind down. It stops the mind from racing. How do you, what, what, how do you take it? It's a, it's, it's a mineral, isn't it? Like a tablet or? Yeah, a tablet. Oh, a tablet form. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not going to get the potency in food mm. for it to have that effect. Like Bro, magnesium, you know, L3-inate, L-glycinate, uh, sorry, l glycinate bi-glycinate, L3-inate, you know, a, a very high bioavailability magnesium, which will get absorbed in the body very quickly. Do you find that, so, as well with, with myself, because I've been looking into ADHD, you know, the other, obviously I've never been diagnosed yet. And it feels like, you know, sometimes you feel like you're trying to find a way out. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Have you done test, like online test? I have. Bob, I can 99.9% well, tell you. I've, we know what I read. Well, you know what it says to me? You go. Seek you're, help. You, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need help. Seek yeah. help. So I, I actually bought a book. Subhanallah. I have. I have and I've yet I've, to read it. Have you read it yet? I've read it, yeah. You I actually have. don't read. You're lucky. No, I, I, I listen to it. All oh, right, I need to get So that. there's this book here of this guy. He's about in his 70s. What's his name? Subhanallah. Why can't I Gabe? remember it? If we've got, to, do you know what? You can cut this bit out, Zach, yeah? Let me just look up the book on my Audible, yeah? I know the guy. Um, he's actually written a book. Uh, uh, Loads of books. Hold so Ramiz, he's, he's, he's gone hyper-focus mode now, look at him. It's true. <laughs> it's true. But basically- I heard Ramiz, <clears throat> but I heard it over there. <laughs> So what ha what happened was I was there was a period in my life where I was struggling, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I kind of um, so I thought I was dyslexic or what? Because what what when I was what, when I did my PGCE, so this this when it started, yeah. I did my PGCE and there was a bit called um, uh, like a section of the course which is to do with uh, learning difficulties. Mm. So we did a we did a test. Yeah, so it was so if you can imagine like a group of grown people, yeah, teachers. So they sat us in the class, and then half the class they gave us green paper, this this green piece of paper, and the other half they gave us a pink piece of paper. So they didn't. They said, "Do not tell each other what's on the paper." Just right? color. So you're gonna See test color, each, but, right. but no, there was there was there was writing on it. Oh right, okay. So. I basically I had to go first and I had to read what was on my paper mm. and they had to kind of follow. But on my paper, it was jumbled up. It was backwards. But on his paper, it was normal. Can you read backwards? Very difficultly. No. Uh, very very, diff very, very uh, no, slowly. I think, I think you can. I can. Yeah. I can. But it, I, I, I found it difficult. But basically, as I was reading it, like I'm in my head, I'm thinking, oh my God, he thinks I can't read. Because you're thinking it's okay, but it's not. It's all jumbled up. Uh, because I think, <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Well, I'm reading it and he's he's following. And then when we swapped paper, he realized that I was reading the, um, the mirror image of what he's reading. It was basically flipped. So what the, what, the, what the PGC tutor was saying to us, he goes, this is what having a learning difficulty feels like. Because everyone else can do things normally hmm. and you're struggling and you're always got that anxiety. Yeah. And you have neuro, neurodivergent, that's basically what it called. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So anyway, what happened was, long story short, I started to think, I was like, then I started to think about when I was a kid, you know, in class, I, I, I used to find it very difficult to concentrate, but I was very intelligent. So I, I never used to, like, I'm not stupid. Stuff like, you know, like sometimes you're made to believe that if you've got a, like dyslexia or whatever it is, you're stupid. There's something out of the norm. Yeah, not made to believe it. normality. This is it. It's out, you're outside the kind of, yeah. So... I didn't put, I mean, I wasn't dyslexic. I knew I wasn't because I could read. Numbers I was okay with, but concentration has always been a problem. 
Anyway, so at that point in life, that's when I bought this book. Like, it came up on my feed or whatever. I bought it, and it, the, the guy, the, the older man, he found out he was uh, dyslexic and had ADHD in his seventies. I knew I had really something. Really later on, but he yeah. goes, I knew, I knew I had it, but he goes, I never got diagnosed. So he goes, simple things like this. He goes, so, so, so it was coping mechanisms. So figures, he goes, do you, I always lose my keys. Yeah. Keys? You know where you put them? In your Never know why. My wallet. How many times have I lost my wallet, bro? bro? Too many times, bro. Do you know how many um, times I lose my glasses every day? It's <laughs> it's the worst. And the, ha the, the, the hands are quicker than the eye anyway. Yeah. <laughs> that makes it worse. Yeah. So so you think, so he, he he started mentioning all these things. I was like, oh my God, it's me. And my dad's the same, by the way. Yeah. Mm. So he goes, you need to develop systems. So Routine think, systems. Routine systems. Like small mm little blocks of systems so for example when you come in put make put a bowl next to your front door just put your there keys you in there and well like subhanallah i started developing that and then eventually i was like then you know what happened uh ramiz subhanallah something amazing happened my brain you know that sizzling it died down because i didn't have to always try and remember 400 things at the same time you made the routine that's, that's it. it it's there yeah yeah so I was like, oh my days, I've just, I've just solved something. It, it, even though it was small, it really, really kind of, it was a big thing for me, mm. you know? Um, so when you, when you're speaking about the patient centered approach and, you know, like if, if this 10 years ago, I'd be like, you know, like skeptical hippo eyes, you know, like. Well, I was when I first went. Do you to, know what I mean? Yeah, I went to first counselor in 1999 with my wife at the time. And because of her, I took up counselling mm. to become one. I said, I'm not, I'm not just going to go to counselling. I'm going to become one. I want to become, and not just for other people's benefit. I couldn't care less about other people at the time. Yeah. My narcissistic, my narcissism at the time, I had narcissistic tendencies. I don't think I was narcissistic. But looking back, I was a bit of a git, no doubt about <laughs> that. You know, and I, could, and I could manipulate it and use it to my advantage. So but only, what but only from my, well, narcissism is, you know, you gaslight people, make them believe that they're at fault. It's usually happens between husband and wife. You know, you make her believe that she's at fault, even though you're <clears> wrong. <throat> Zach, can you um, Google the definition of narcissism? I Googled it the other day. Uh, yeah, it's, there's manipulation involved. There's, you really couldn't care about other people's feelings because yeah. yours is much more important. You're trying to get your your worldview being seen. Yeah, yeah? you never take you take things for granted. You, I mean, there's so many there symptoms. So, Not some symptoms. But so it's many. Actually, yeah. It's actually a mental health condition, though. Narcissistic. No, I, I, I wouldn't say that. I think it's a very um, a negative human trait to have. But it's actually in the medical... It's, it's a narcissistic personality disorder. It's a mental health condition in which people have unreasonable high... Of their own self. <laughs> yeah, they're more important than anybody else. Yeah, they're, they're, And they're never wrong. They're never... You know, I've still got those things. Yeah. I still, I know, and, and I've got friends say to me, oh, you're never wrong. And I thought, no, 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 I don't, I don't want that. So I changed <laughs> it. I changed it by recognising my wrongs and making them right. Mm. So I don't want to be that... I don't want to be that person. Can I manipulate you? No problem if I wanted to, yeah. but I won't. It's like I can, but I won't. Yeah. But the reason I, I I think I was narcissistic is I used it to my advantage to push people away. And if they push them away, it'd be okay. It's like I want to sell my car. Yeah. So I'll put it at a higher I don't really want to sell it, but I'll put it at a higher price. If I if I sell it, it's a bonus. Yeah. If I don't, it doesn't matter because I don't want to sell it. You, you, want, you want people, you want, there's some people around with you. So if you don't want to be around with you, 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 you develop a sense of a, a, a barrier yeah. to let them know that I don't deserve you as a friend. And I'm happy with that. So you self-sabotage it. And it's fine because you actually, true, you actually believe that that person doesn't deserve you as a friend. Or you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't deserve to have that person yeah, as a friend. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. The same with relationships. It's so like bullies as well. You know, bullies uh, have the same thing in school when, when you see a kid bullying another kid. Well, yeah, that, you know, that, can, st time, that can start from that and yeah. then they'll just continue with it because they can. Yeah, yeah. And the, the oppressor gets away with it because the oppressed allows them to. So when it comes to like self-sabotaging, it's because you don't believe you deserve it. You have, a, you have imposter syndrome. Yeah. I don't deserve that. So I sabotage it to prove myself right. Yeah. So you sabotage relationships. You sabotage 
job job opportunities, business opportunities, things that you can make you rich, but you don't. They don't deserve that. Yeah, that's not me. I'm a mediocre man or a mediocre woman. This is what I deserve, and that's it. Because I've been made to believe that mm. somewhere along the line. And I'm 57 this year, alhamdulillah. You're 57 and this year, yeah. Long so, bad, alhamdulillah. So I've I've come to a point, first time in my life now, that I'm going to make myself number one, but without pushing people away and just, ha ha I've got the balance, alhamdulillah, but it's taken a long time. Mm. It's taken a long time for me to have that kind of sense of reality about myself. So in the person-centered approach, it's about self-actualization, becoming the human being that you want to become. And because I've become that person, or becoming that person is much more easier now, because I've set the pace for myself, I look back in regret mm. of hurting people, doing things that I regret, saying things that I regret, um, trying to find people to have closure with, um, all these kind of things. But don't allow it to define me, to sabotage me now. Because I've, I've, I've become, I've, I've actualized. And just because I was teaching this in lessons, you know, Islamic lessons or non-Islamic lessons regarding self-development, I always told people, don't think that I'm sitting here because I know more than you. I'm just telling you about my journey. And if it, and if it resonates with you, then take up that same path. Mm. That's all it is. I can't help you unless you help yourself. The same with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah says, Allah is not changing people's situation, it's first to change what's within themselves. Patience, understanding that Islamically as well, um, you know, you know, la wa la illa billah. Understanding that you can relax more. You have you have more you have more competency in believing that by recognizing that that there is a higher being, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that is in control of everything. There's not a problem. My only duty is to follow what He says to the best of my ability. Everything else you'll take care of. So that's another thing that we I, I wanted to speak, touch upon is that there's a lot of brothers and sisters now who can't make decisions, who can't move forward. They don't know what to do about life. They can't handle certain dis discrepancies or tests or imtihans or uh, ibtila or whatever it may be. And that's and that comes from the fact of not just lack of iman, but haven't been t haven't been taught. How to deal with difficulties. It's okay to say to somebody, or say to somebody in the Ma'al Yusra that after the difficulty is the ease. But it's not after difficulties. In the Ma'al is with the difficulties the ease. So I made a video years and years, I can't remember now, 10, 15, 20 years ago, it's called The Power of Problems. Problems are opportunities. If you really look at it, or for some people, it's just it's something to destroy you mm. because you've been made to believe that um, you don't deserve good. So when, when bad comes, it's normal. It's normal. If you feel like you're yeah. reset, you're, I'm not you're, used you're to being zone. given, I'm not used to being given love. I'm not used to being shown care. I'm not used to um, ease. I'm used to drama. I'm used to anger. I'm used to rage. That sort of thing. Mm. So it's about changing the, the person's belief system about themselves, that you are worthy. You are deserved of good. You know, you are capable of love and receiving love. You know, otherwise you, your relationships will suffer. Mine did. <coughs> I'm not saying they're not to blame. I'm looking, I'm not looking at their blaming them. My exes, I'm not looking at that. I don't care because I had, I'm to blame as well. Mm. You know, I'm looking at the more deeper aspect of the fact of why I sabotaged. I didn't realize I sabotaged, but looking back now, I did sabotage. Have I had closure with them? Yeah, I have. And I'm happy with that. Very happy with that. And person-centered approach, or people-centered approach, or Rogerian approach, <coughs> is that, is to talk about your feelings mm. around certain things. Why do you react the way you do? Why do you self-sabotage? Why don't you believe you deserve love and care and everything that is good, that is good, that somebody else has that you don't, you think, well, they, they're better than me. That's why they have that. Yeah. You know? I mean, um, when you think about, I think 
obviously we, I've, I've worked with a lot of people over the years, just like from a teaching perspective, coaching perspective, you know, and, and you get to kind of pick up a lot on people's behaviors and even your own, you learn a lot about yourself as well. Um, I think as I hit my thirties, um, you start to, th you start to understand that a lot of the chaos around you is as a result of what you're doing. You kind of affect that chaos. You're creating it. Yeah. And, but you don't realize that because you're, you're only looking at people's it's so reactions. It's better than you. Yeah. But you're looking at people's reactions to you. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. So, and a lot of people don't even live in that space. So for example, there's a lot of people walking around that are like robots. So they're only, it's like, they don't know they're they, alive. They're not thinking about like how they're, they, they, they're affecting their environment. Does that make sense? I'll give you an example, simple thing, like your, your children. Yeah. As a father, your responsibility is for your whole family. Right? Yeah. When you make a decision, you need to make a decision not only based on yourself. You've got to make a decision based on your, your, your How wife. How it's going to affect your whole being. Exactly. Yeah. But your child is not thinking like that. Your child is thinking about themselves. Because they're only on the ego stage at the moment. This it? is it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so when you say to them, no, that you can't do that, this one thing, they can't even fathom in their head why you said no. Yeah. Because in their world, well, it's just this. But you're thinking, how does it affect everything else? The same thing like we, like at Legion, we try and talk to the young, young, young brothers there who are coming up through coaching. And when you get put into a, a coaching environment, you're teaching, you're at a point where you're, you're, given, you're given a responsibility now. So you have to go from, right, I'm a student, so I'm walking to the class as myself, right? I'm, I, I came from my house, yeah, I got dressed, me. I got into the class, I'm training, I'm worrying about my own training. And then I finish and I go home, right? Same thing with the teacher, uh, same thing with the student in, in school. That's what I try to tell my kids. When a, when, a, when a teacher is, you feel like he's being unfair with you, you don't understand the pressures that they're going through, yeah? So when you become a, someone who's responsible for someone else, people don't expect the people you're responsible for to understand where you are, why it's you're like making those the, decisions. It's like being the emir, isn't it? Exactly. And that's why the, the subordinates have to listen to the emir. That's it. Otherwise, the boat sinks. But sometimes the subordinates or the students, mm. they want to be leaders as well. That's why in the army, they break you to make you. Yeah. So that you, you there's no, uh, there's no, but sir, why should we do it? You get it now and again. Yeah. There's always yes, sir. No, sir. Yeah. That's it. Finished. But also, like, leadership has to that. come with... So another thing as well, like, when, I, when, when, when guys, I want to I want to take a class, I want to do this, I wanna, you know what? You can't have leadership without responsibility. Does that make sense? You can't say, I'm, I'm a leader, but you don't take everything that comes with it. Because they haven't been taught, they don't know that. They don't know that. So, no. so, so as a, for example, as a father, yeah, your, your, your whole job is to make sure your, 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 your kids become leaders in, in their families, especially if you've got boys, and even girls as well, because they're going to be mothers and stuff like that. Now, how do you teach someone that? How do you teach someone, like, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you leadership, but you've got to take everything it's, that comes with it. Yeah, man. it's like giving an oppressor leadership. This is it. So like dictatorship, for example, dictatorship, yeah, yeah. A, a tari, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Like the, 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 so if you look at someone like Qaddafi or Fir'aun, for example, who, like it was about himself. Whereas being a leader. And that's how he's going to, he's going to use people to make himself happy. This is it. And you know, uh, he, like he actually said, I am your God, bro. Like he got to that point of ego where, he couldn't even see anything else. Yeah, on the Book of Allah, that, this that's, is that's it. Because he didn't, and some of the scholars say that the reason he said that is because Allah never gave him any sickness or headache. This is it. So he believed that I'm, I, I, I'm immortal. So I believe that there's a lot of pharaohs, you know, pharaonic attitudes, hundred yeah. percent walking around the streets. And this is why I always say, oh, that, oh, um, Ramiz, I, I need to pick this up with you. Mm. I was going through YouTube shorts. And Zaka, correct me if I'm wrong, bro. Yeah, you get a lot of these shorts. I'm a good-looking guy who makes money, and I've, I've I sat oh, yeah. down. I was chatting to this guy. I made a billion, and look at my crypto. This and that. 
And bruv, I'm got just a Lamborghini. Sick. I've got a Lamborghini. He's in his Lamborghini. He's just, and oh yeah, I've um last I was a millionaire by the time I was 23, and da 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 da, da and all this stuff. Like you, you see it on your on your feed. And this is the currency at the moment, yeah? Where and I think to yourself, what about you as a per- you, you your you character, man. bro? What, yeah, that what kind make of you person a man are being you, bro? millionaire? I will know you. Yeah. Like what kind you of makes person? you? Oh, I wake up at three in the morning and pump like do four hundred pull ups and okay and so, yeah. Like and, what and are that. you in? Like inside? What kind of? Yeah. Like if you look at, I would know your character. I don't know how much you got. I don't care. Yeah. But the problem is, is that the the pendulum has swung so far the other side that there's these shells of people walking around, man children. They've lost complete. Yeah. Yeah. But. Um, they could have a conversation with you about any depth of conversation, I any, any I, kind of that de- degree of depth whatsoever. And we're sitting there, like we're all. Ch- by the way, we're all brokies. No, we we're all brokies, bro. Uh, some, but we're all yeah, chumps, some, bro. People some don't these, have money. Are chumps? Yeah, but some of these people who are on shorts, things like that, they do it for bait, you know, clickbait and all so? that. But majority of them are like this narcissistic. Me, myself, and I. What can I get from this person? Mm, no, and I remember saying this in my twenties that some people around me. You know, I was a people pleaser and I got bitten a lot. Mm. I got bitten a lot. Okay, my naivety. But then when I, but for me to handle it now, I said, no, I wasn't naive and stupid. Yeah. I, just, I was just w- with the wrong people. Yeah. That's all. I was with the wrong people who manipulated my sense of pleasing to please themselves. Yeah. And, as long as, see, people pleasing is you want to please someone so that you you feel like um, you don't want anyone to see you as a bad person. You already feel that you already feel that way anyway. So you pe- you want to please people to get validation from them and, and approval from them. And if you find someone that you believe is better than you, then you want to please that person so that they'll turn around and say to you, "Well done." Validate. Okay. Well, you, validate yeah. you. Yeah. Can I can I show you a couple of videos? Mm-hmm. I want to get your opinion on this, mm-hmm. Zach. Are we good on YouTube? Can you type in Alex A L E X Hermosi? Yeah. H uh, talks speaks about his father. I'm well, not talking about my father. It makes me emotional. Man. But this guy, you listen, listen to this guy, mm. and tell me. Oh. Not, do you remember this? I want to smack him. So, can you bring it out, please, if you can? It wasn't until I think we did. Okay. I think I've seen this. Like 17 million in EBITDA, like profit, take home. My dad called me and he's like, are you sitting down? And I remember like at this point, like we, we were like not talking too much. And he's like, I'm sorry. And it was what? the first time he'd ever apologized to me in my life. What's interesting to me though, is that it didn't feel like anything because I had stopped caring about what he thought about me a long time ago. When I quit my job was the day that like I accepted dying to my father. Very much to me at that point was I'd really done everything that he had wanted me to do. I finished Vanderbilt in three years, president of fraternity, had won writing awards. I'd done everything. It wasn't enough. And I knew that yeah. the choice for me was that I either had to die to him or I had to die to myself. Wow. When he called me and he apologized, and this is where I like, you know, I'm ashamed of myself. I could have just let it lie. Instead, I said, I was like, you know, when people get up on stage and they're like, hey, mom and dad, I just want to say thanks so much for always believing me. I was like, I won't say that. Oh my God. What do you say to that? He said, well, we'll see how long it lasts. It wasn't until I think we did like 17 million in EBITDA, like profit. So, so for me, obviously, just to give you a bit of background on the story, his dad paid for everything. His dad was quite, I think he's wealthy or like he paid for his uni. It's the result, isn't it? That's the result of his dad's hard work, bro. Yeah. But but he, I can imagine, I understand having that looming father figure over you who wants, you have to go and do this. Basically, his dad laid out his whole career for him. And when he didn't, when he quit his job to go and be, do, do his startup or whatever it is, yeah? Like his dad kind of was didn't approve of it, yeah? Which is, you know. Yeah, so, but kids don't want stuff. They want you. Yeah, but I'm, so, but I'm saying, I'm saying like from an Islamic perspective, yeah? That's your father, bro. He's paid for everything, yeah? Okay, I'd, I'd, I understand the trauma that this guy's gone through. I yeah. get it, yeah? But he still but can make a choice as an adult. This is what I'm saying. And yeah. he, actually, he actually acknowledged, to be fair to him, in that clip, he acknowledged that what he did was a bit... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's a reaction. It's fine. Yes. Because his child, at that point, his, his inner child spoke, not mm. him. The hurt child, the yeah. child that was always wanting his father to be there for him, yeah. take him fishing, take him camping, mentor him emotionally, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I never got all that myself personally. Yeah. Yeah. And 
I must I must add that I resented I want to say both my parents but my mum for for a few years I used to have dreams that my, somebody else was my mum mm. and when it came to a point where when do you come when, when does a person say to themselves I'm going to stop blaming my parents or parents yeah or caregivers and start taking responsibility for myself because I haven't been taught that take responsibility for myself what does that mean take responsibility for my emotions and my reactions when i read in the ma nut'imukum li wajhi Allah la nuridu minkum wala jaza yeah i don't want i do it for the sake of Allah i don't do it for any any thanks or reward when i read that verse i calmed down a bit Yeah. So I started thinking, oh, if I'm going to do something, my intention has to be for the sake of Allah. Otherwise, don't do it. Secondly, when I read the when I read the hadith that always be respectful to your parents, even if they're oppressive to you. Yes. You can't make a justification that I'm like this because my parents are like that. Allah doesn't care about that. Mm. Obviously, Allah is al adl. It's like saying to a couple, why are you behaving that way to your husband? Because he did this and this did that. Why are you behaving this way to your wife? Because she done this and she done that. Allah's not going to care about that. You're not here to give adl. Allah's al adl. You're here to do your duty. Well, even through the oppression, yes. Because that's what you're going to be asked for. Yeah. You can't say to Allah, well, I didn't feed her, give her this, give her that, or give him this and give him that because he did this and did that to me. Mm. And it's a very thin line between feeling the guilt of Feeling the guilt of neglecting your duties and feeling, feeling the guilt of letting yourself down. Mm. So my advice, and there's a lot of people going through this, a lot of people going through this. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. I know it's like, for example, couples, sometimes they come to me and the matters are very trivial. And I think, you know, you can deal with this very easily, but for them it's real. The struggle is real, as they say. But if you've developed yourself to such a point and you've gone through that, it's easy to explain to that person and make them realize that what you guys are arguing about, have you recognized how, how trivial it is? And within yourself, how trivial is it that you're, what did your parents really do to you that you have to behave that bad? For example, this guy Alex, he's a millionaire. But he's angry because mm. his inner child still wants his father to recognize and fulfill his validation and, and validate him. Mm. That's what's coming out there. So I think it's in transition. It just, it just for me, it, 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 uh, it made me stand back a little bit and think, okay. Because I'm a father, but because, almost, was, uh, yeah, but almost a son. Like son. I understand where but you're he, looking at Islamically. Yeah, but you can't. You got to put yourself in his shoes. Of course, I get it. I get it. But yeah. but I, I give you an example. Yeah, no matter. Say 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 for example. Have you seen that? Uh, there's a, there's a play called Fences. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh, with uh, Denzel Washington. Yeah, he said, yeah. "Why don't you like me?" Yeah, I'm not yeah. here to like you. Yeah, don't want to provide. Well, it's you, a bit don't extreme don't... and all that. But yeah, but it's a point. It's a point. It's a point because it's a po- huge point. I might not want to be in a situation, but he was there every day. I'm showing you I like you and I love you by being there every this day. Is it. This is it, bro. And giving you this. And I feel but, like we've... But, sorry about the cut there. But the child recognizes that, but he yeah. still wants you mm. to validate. Mm. No matter what. Yes, I'm fed. I recognize that. Thank you. I'm clothed. Yes, I recognize that. But don't you love me and like me enough to validate me emotionally? Mm. But we, as men, we, 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 we are... It's a given and a default for our emotions to be suppressed. Yeah. And not to be dealt Factory with. Factory settings. Factory setting. Yeah. And even if you done a master reset, nothing will happen. You'll yeah. still be the same. You 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 need apps. <laughs> you know, you need an emotional yeah. app to help yeah. you deal with, uh, you know, y- yourself. I look back and when I think about my parents, I still have a little bit of, tomorrow was my mum. Mm. Well, it licks every day. It was like it was like mum won't, mum won't recognize that now. She's an old lady. I love her. She's my mum. No matter what, mm. she still triggers me, of course, because she knows which buttons to press because she put them there. Yeah. So <laughs> let's leave my mum out for a second. Mum is always there. Mum is mum. Yeah. 
with my father, I mean, growing up, and I, growing up, I say growing up, growing up in Dean since 1996, 97. After I, I, after I started reflecting, because when I first came in, it's about me first. It's about me, learning about my Dean, my this and that. Then, you know, when I first came to Dean, I said to my parents, you guys are Kafirs. Whoa. Yeah. You took me, you take me to Turkish weddings and dance around like monkeys in a zoo, displaying this and that. That's how I was taught my parents when I first came to Dean. It was like, I like him an injection of Iman. It was like a big drug, an Imanic drug. I had a bullet for everybody. Because yeah. I had anger issues as well. I almost anger, rage issues. So after a little while, I got some of the sheikhs, alhamdulillah, bless them. They balanced me out. And when I got balanced out, then I went back home and started, you know, talking to her about Dean and all yeah. that. So it took me six years to get my dad off Ataturk. Mm. Yeah, it's a long time. Because he's been brainwashed since three years old with Ataturk and his nonsense. And I say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I say, Allah, my father and, and mother, they spent nearly 25 years in the same cafe, my mum in the front and my dad in the kitchen. And now they're going to die and go hellfire. I said, Allah, please don't take my life until I see them pray. Mm. And alhamdulillah, Praying all my family, alhamdulillah now, alhamdulillah. you know, and I hope I'm the instigator to get all that reward, my yes. brothers and so on and so forth, alhamdulillah. So, you know, thinking about it now, every time I feel like, like getting triggered, I think about what they went through to bring me up. Mm. Like, sometimes I live with them and it gets me, it gets, sometimes it gets too much. I need my space a little bit. You know, the parents are very demanding, but because they, they've gone from a child to a childlike state now. My dad's 80, mum's 77. Long and I'm thinking, oh, man, it's too much. Nothing was it. Was it too much mum changing my nap here every time I cried? Feed me every time I cried? Or I cried when I didn't, I didn't, I didn't need anything. That's how I uh, balance it out. Yeah. My innate, I'll say, resentment and how they brought me up. And I think, you know what? I must have been a very needy and demanding child as all day. So my mum didn't say no to me. So I'm not going to say no to them, even if it means like I'm not giving myself time, mm. like me time, because mom and dad need me. Because you know why? Allah's going to deal with it. Yeah. But also so you're, you're getting a reward for it as well, bro. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Yeah. And I think sometimes. Inshallah. Inshallah, man. Uh, let's bring it to a close now, inshallah. Inshallah. Um, why don't you kind of summarize everything for us? Right. Uh, what I would say is, what I would say is, anyone, nobody is going to be, no, no one's going to recognize or be aware that they need to grow until they're, until they take an active stance and look in the mirror and reflect. Once they do that, then they'll recognize where they need to be. If they listen to their spouse as well, listen to, their, listen to friends, they, you're like this and you always do this and you don't, you say, no, no, no. The idea is to, is to be, I mean, in a position to recognize your own self so you can actualize mm. the real being that you want to be. And that will take a long time. It will take a long time. You have to listen to the rhetorics of how people see you. You may, you may, you may portray one being and the people around you see something else so your friend may say to you you know what you never listen and I've had that a lot and it's not that I don't listen I don't listen at a time that they need me listening to they need me listening to them and that's because of ADHD maybe or the fact that because I don't, I don't see my self worth I don't see their, their worth and I've had enough you know, it's about me now. I don't know, Allah alam. But that, <coughs> it takes a long time. So I guess, one, reflect. Two, take time to yourself. Two, reflect. Because your children take your energy, your parents take your energy, your wife takes your energy, your husband takes your energy, your friends take your energy, life takes your energy, work takes your energy, your work colleagues take your energy. How are you going to replenish? How do you replenish your energy? Mentally, physically, emotionally, mm. and spiritually. Three, counselling, get coaching. Traditionally, we had the Murabbi. 
Yeah. We we had mentors and coaches. Or your parents or yeah. someone. But if they're the issue but or if you're the issue. Uh, all our first generation close. are the issue. Because yeah. they don't know these things. They're not educated enough to know these things. And if they are, it's only enough to find work, not to develop. Mm. You know, self-development comes from recognizing your own issues if you want to grow. And that comes from sincerity. I'll tell you what, no, I'm going to shout out my mom, though. My mom was my psychologist, bro. It's parallel. Wallahi, bro. Like, um, I don't know if I've ever told her this in person, bro. But when I was going through a really difficult time, which is most of my adult life, bro, like, she was there. Um, because I know she's been through a lot herself. And she she managed to kind of coach me through it. And I think with my father as well, he brought a different dynamic, you know. Like tough love. Big time tough love. Bro. I'm the opposite. My mum gave me tough love. Yeah. And my dad was the the studious giant who always told me, what have you studied today? What have you learned today? Yeah, my, you know my dad? My dad's an oxymoron, bro. Like, <laughs> don't you think, Zach? <laughs> It's like he's very relaxed, but he can exist in a very yeah. intense. Shout out to our parents. That's man. it. Well, Shout out to all so, the parents out there. And that mix are, as well. Yeah. Who are fear and I'm worry gonna, about their yeah, children because it's, because the struggle is real. Yeah. It absolutely is real. Yeah. You've got kids. I've got children. Yeah. And now I'm glad you said that. Shout out to your mum, yeah. who's always because I I look at myself now and how how I my parents didn't have that. The first generation to come from another country, yeah. they worked their butt off to bring me up where I am, yeah. and I feel so bad for resenting any kind of yeah. non uh, yeah. reaction from them, non giving from them, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But now I can be the parent I am now because of them. Yeah. Yeah. And give my children the time and to be their to be their psychologist, being their mentor, give them the strength and the confidence and self-esteem and the love and the validation and nurturing they need to be yeah. the person that they want to become at an earlier age rather than later on. I say I would say that um I get my intensity from my dad. Like when I look back at, at it, like I, honestly, wallahi, bro, I'm not joking. He might not think it, but he might not believe it, but One a thing lot of the tarbiya that he gave me. You deserved it. No, I do to my own children because yeah. I know I'm the, saying, you the needed benefit. It. I had to have it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying, yeah. And, but different thing, generation. Different generation. I had to have it. And the thing is, he toned it down from his, he <laughs> filtered it down from his dad. He gave me the good stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? And, I, and, and, it's and a working formula. Huh? It's a formula that works. Yeah, yeah. So, so he, 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 bro, subhanAllah, he never worked, like he worked around us. Because he knew, look, I'm in the West. So, I can't lose myself in... Uh, he didn't have a career, bro. I want to be like that kind of dad. Yeah. That's what he was like, bro. Yeah. Like, he, he he took part-time jobs so he's able to pick us up from school. Bro, he never... Like, subhanAllah, so, like, Allah, like, may Allah bless, bless him, bro. Cry, man. Honestly. I always say I can work six days a week yeah. and see my children once a week. Yeah. But I choose to only work yeah. a few days. Well, like, I'm so telling you... So that I can see them more. And do as, things as an them. adult... Of a of a of a of a, of a of a parent that did that, and bro, my dad doesn't have a penny to his name, bro. Like, but he, we are his riches, isn't it? That's what he says to us, bro. Subhanallah. I have um, my riches. What do I need my money for? That's what I'm saying to you, bro. Yeah. Like that's that's how he thinks. You know, sometimes he he, he, he kind of ponders a little bit. He's like, oh, you know what? I don't have a property that I can re retire to. I don't have this and all. But I'm like, uh, well, but then he remembers. He, he kind of, you know, he remembers. He's like, you know what? No, no, no. Alhamdulillah, bro. And he's, a, he's he's such a changed person now, bro. Yeah, he's he's, he's like, mellowed out a lot. He's how a, he is now, he's yeah, definitely not how he was. No, no. But no. also, my mom's the same. My mom, she's dedicated her whole life to us, bro. I can't even, I can't remember All a time she do. did that's, something that's, that, for that's herself. What they, that's what they live for. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Can I sh share with you something? Yeah, yeah. like a, a graphic that someone sent me. Yeah. And we'll end on this one, inshallah. This is important. It's not a man beating his mum, is it? No, 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 no. No, stuff I've like seen, that. I've no, seen no that. I don't like seeing that kind of no. stuff, bro. This is more about um, the West, yeah? And and people moving to the West, yeah? Um, sorry, give me one second, yeah. You know, you're talking about your your parents and everything. Yeah. We was in, in Ramadan... I found it, yeah, but you can finish your, no, your no, story. No, no. no, you finish your story in the night until you afterwards. That it was uh, iftar time and my daughters and my son was there and my parents were there and I said to my children, make dua. 
you know, a few minutes. And my son goes, I did. I said, when? I go, what dua did you make? Obviously, he's going to say, he's seven years old, yeah? Yeah. Oh, man. He said, I made dua, Papa. I said, I made dua to Allah to give you and me life so you can see me grow. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> and I'll never forget the rest of my life. Yeah. And if Allah gives me life, and I'm on my deathbed, and my son is there as a man, yeah. I'm going to remind him this. Yeah. I'm going to remind him that. That make, that gives me more energy yeah. to do more of what I'm That's doing it. with them. And I would say that, and if inshallah my dad hears this and my mom, like he's done a good job, man. And I'm not not because like I'm an amazing person, but because of what the you're not in prison, the, the, you're not on drugs. This is it. You're not on. You're not on. You're not doing so, you, you You've become the person that's not going to give them stress. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about myself. I'm talking about all my my, my brothers and sisters. Yeah. Because. I'll, I'll read you this statistic here. Bro. Yeah. So it says, um, around 80 years ago, a sheikh migrated to Ecuador and built the first ever mosque there. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Sheikh, bro. How many years ago? 80. So that's what, 30s, right? Mm. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Today, 40s, mm, yeah. 40s, yeah. Today, none of his grandchildren are Muslim. SubhanAllah. My uh, my grandfather, Sheikh Al, uh, Ali al tatawi not my grandfather, but the person who wrote this, himself has 48 grandchildren. 16 of them, a third, are no longer Muslim. <laughs> the ancestor of, Ramadan, the, of the Ramadan family of Beirut migrated to Ecuador in 1923. They had 98 grandchildren. All are Christians today. Uh, it says it, there's like a little graph. It says 1923 or 95. If uh, I don't, this graph doesn't make sense to me, but it says it below. Oh, okay, they, they've, they've said it already. But so you see the the the, the work that needs to be done. Obviously now a lot more. Work. It's not we're not doing nothing. This is it. So I remember my dad went to Hajj, and he asked the Sheikh there. He said, "Look, is it is it okay to live here like in the West?" And you're like, "Oh, question." And the Sheikh said, "Look, yeah, look." Can you guarantee? Nothing's guaranteed. Okay. Can you guarantee that it's your by, children only are your, by the permission of Allah? That's it. Allah. The thing is, you can use your you use your deen anywhere, even in a Muslim country, bro. But I'm saying, <sighs> like, let's take that, but think about: Can you like? What shape are your grandchildren going to be? If you don't like, we, we that's have, why I say to my kids, but whatever I'm teaching you now, you have to teach you have your to pass children, it on. your children, children, your children, children. Nothing matters except Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That's it. That's it. Nothing matters except Allah. Um, I'm not. I'm not like hey, you done your prayer. Yeah. I'm not like that. I talked yeah. to them. I said, listen, you got to go to your grave. Me to my. I can't help you. Yeah. I can only get help you now. And what gives me comfort? Yeah. Is the fact that Allah's in control of everything. Yeah, so. And why did? Why did Allah protect the orphans' wealth when Dul Khidr protected or fixed that wall? Because their father was a pious man. You know what scholars say? Not the father, the grandfather. Mm. So well, our duty to just get close to Allah Subhanahu wa as much as possible. Look, SubhanAllah, yeah. I was saying to my son the other day, I said, look, how many men had to and women had to pass on Islam for us to be Muslim today? Because I was born Muslim, yeah? So think about it. The chain. Yeah. The unbroken chain for me to sit here to, 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 saying La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. How many people had to pass that down and teach their son or daughter that pass it down to their son or daughter that pass it for me to sit here today and say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And how many people today I took their shahada who didn't have because, bro, if I trace my lineage back, we're probably mushrik, bro, at a point. Yeah, there was the first person yeah. that took their shahada, right? That's right. It had to be somebody. It had to be somebody. Yeah. yeah? Now look at look at the people like mashallah there's a lot of reverts and as part I know when I was growing up like um in the nineties early nineties brothers that became Muslim their children now are having children bro hmm. so there's a whole kind of family mashallah that all, all Muslims bro and well, they've been in Dean 25, 26 years now well, there you go bro. Alhamdulillah. So and you're my kind of kids the, are like the second generation of Muslims. This is it, and so then you got like, your brothers, yeah, right? Who are yeah, yeah. and and the, uh, from what from the last podcast we spoke about, you're the one, Mashallah, who gave them da'wah, alhamdulillah. 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 But alhamdulillah. obviously they they took took up on. Yeah. But but do you see what I'm saying to you? So that's the importance of fatherhood and and strong fam strong families and yeah. bonds and all this stuff, brother. 
So Allah help us, give us the uh, I mean, give us the tawfiq to keep it strong, man. This is it, and say the right thing in the right way to the right person, in the right manner. And to to kind of cap it off of what you said about having this this therapy, it's important because a lot Most of people, people have lost but lost that kind of. Well, this is the system. The system now is yeah. programmed to gear people away from truth and self worth. Yeah. In school, you're, you you getting your exam, passing the exams, doesn't mean they're intelligent. Yeah. Just shows that you have a good memory. Yeah. Isn't it? And that's what I tell my children. Yeah. You could have a PhD on the wall. But if your character stinks, you can yeah, almost take point? it up. What does yeah, that mean? Yeah. You could be a billionaire and your character stinks. Have yeah. 10 Ferraris and build it. But if your character stinks, so what? what kind you're going to end up, you, you're yeah. gonna be alone. You're going to end up alone. So you, I'd rather be, I'd rather, have, I'd, rather, I'd rather my children be poor. I'd rather they be, you know, homeless or, you know, and, but be Muslim. Yeah. And have good character. Have right? good character. Yeah. Akhlaq and adab and everything that they need for someone to say, Look at he's a homeless person. You yeah, but I bet his character is better than yours. And we should never, we should never feel safe that we're, and, and think we're better than somebody else. Mm. Never. There's always growth, and the reason we're all students is because there's always somebody who knows more than you. I think we should end it. That's beautiful. Alhamdulillah. Uh, and everyone at home I know we've been away for a while I um, haven't decided which uh, episode this is going to be um, but uh, we've missed you guys we've missed making the podcast so we're going to come back strong in 20 I know we've been away in Sudan and all, all this stuff and we've, we've really been trying to figure out the, the future of this show and where we want to take it so there's going to be some exciting uh, announcements in the next few months so keep it peeled and if you haven't done so already please go to our, subscribe to the youtube if you if you listen you can go into spotify uh, listen to the podcast you go into spotify spotify <laughs> apple, spotify uh, apple Podcasts, and we are going to start a new discord channel so discord meaning that you can chat to us in the back end we're going to have a uh, special behind the scenes footage and and uh competitions and you guys actually can can actually give us ideas as well on future shows. So you get to interact with us in a two way instead of me just speaking to a camera. And uh, on that note. And uh, go the, on. the chat right page. Still yes. Right. So look, you can still, the, the we're still raising money for charity, right? We're still, it's, it's in the description in the show notes. You can still click and donate. Don't, just because Ramadan is over doesn't mean these kids don't, don't need to be fed. So let's try and keep a, a good, you know, ongoing, uh, charity, even if it's five pound a month or whatever it is, uh, let's keep it forward. And we're, we're going to keep reminding everyone. So on that note, I will see you on the next one.